Ampira is a drug used to improve walking speed in people with multiple sclerosis. This is a brief video about how it works and the major side effects. I'm Brandon Bieber. If you find this video informative, please like it and subscribe to my channel for more videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday. So Ampira is dalfampridine, which is an extended release formulation of 4-aminopyridine. 4-aminopyridine, or 4-AP, has been used in multiple sclerosis for a very long time, and it used to be made in compounding pharmacies. But there were issues where people would get inconsistent dosing, and they could overdose and have seizures. So dalfampridine is essentially a set formulation. The dose is 10 milligrams given every 12 hours to lower the risk of that particular side effect. Now, we don't know exactly how it works, but we know that 4-AP has an effect of blocking voltage-gated potassium channels and potentiating voltage-gated calcium channels. And we believe this may improve conduction through injured or demyelinated areas of the nervous system and potentially improve certain multiple sclerosis symptoms. And the drug is FDA approved to improve walking speed. However, people have reported other benefits in some cases anecdotally, like improvements in speech or or heat sensitivity, or improvements in fatigue, or even other things like sexual function. But really the strongest evidence is for walking speed. Now there's a strange thing with this drug where it has sort of a responder, non-responder effect. Some people benefit from the drug and some people don't benefit at all. For instance, in one phase three randomized trial, walking speed improved in 42.9% of people taking the drug Ampira, but only 9.3% in placebo. So as you can see, only some people benefit, many people don't. And so I generally recommend trying this drug for only four weeks, and if there's no benefit, just stopping the drug. There's really no point to take it long long term if it's not benefiting you because this really isn't a disease modifying therapy. It doesn't reduce inflammation, it doesn't grow nerve tissue, it doesn't prevent relapses or, or new MRI lesions. It really is only to help with the symptoms. So if it's not benefiting you, there's really no point to take it. Now, the medication has the potential side effect of seizures, as I mentioned, particularly with overdose. So I recommend people take 10 milligrams every 12 hours. And that's a little different from other medications you might take twice a day, like high blood pressure medications, where it's not necessarily a big deal if you take it, for instance, at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. This medication I recommend taking about 12 hours apart, for instance, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., or 10 a.m. and 10 p.m., plus or minus one hour. And if you are over an hour late for a dose, I would suggest just skipping that dose and go ahead and take the next dose. And the reason is because if the doses are taken too close together, potentially the levels of 4 aminopyridine in the blood can rise and potentially cause a seizure. And this drug has a very narrow therapeutic index, and potentially you can take one extra tablet and have a seizure. And I did in fact have that in one of my patients. Because of this side effect, I don't recommend this medication in people who have a history of epilepsy or seizures, and I would also have great reservation in prescribing it to someone who takes other medications known to lower the seizure threshold. Some examples include Welbutrin or Bupropion used for depression, along with Ultram or Tramadol used to treat pain. Another thing is that even though this drug doesn't damage the kidneys, generally speaking, it is excreted by the kidneys. And so if you have abnormal kidney function, it can raise the levels of the drug and make it more dangerous. So if you have reduced kidney function measured by creatinine, for instance, a creatinine clearance of 50 to 80, which is slightly reduced, I would usually recommend the medication 10 milligrams once per 24 hours instead of once per 12 hours. Generally speaking, I don't recommend this medication to people with a creatinine clearance less than 50, and it's reasonable to monitor the blood test creatinine, which measures kidney function, periodically. Of course, I would suggest you get advice from your own provider. Some other possible side effects of this medication are dizziness, nausea. I had one patient actually complain of worsening urinary incontinence, which is unusual, but it seemed to resolve after stopping the medication. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.